pour yourself a cold one and join us for an hour filled to the brim with fun. It hurts in my ears right now. Entertainment. Cheeky, cheeky, bang, bang. Information. I need some water and a washcloth. And a little weirdness. Can I be a duck? Yeah, I don't, I don't think they want me to be a duck. It's Happy Hour with DJ Kyle, presented by SRD Financial Advisors. Hey, welcome back to Happy Hour with your host, DJ Kyle. That's me, I'm DJ Kyle. And welcome to Lake TV. I wanna say thanks to my sponsors, SRG Financial Advisors. Uh, they are our flagship sponsor, and I wanna just say thank you to them. They are home of the mile marker formula. Any kind of advice that you need for financial, your 401k, your retirements, go talk to our good friends at SRG Financial Advisors. Also, thanks to Ozark Barge and Doc. You wanna get those docks all ready for the summer? Contact our good friends, Ozark Barge and Doc. They'll get you all taken care of. Our veterinary at the lake, they are sponsoring uh, one of our uh, furry friends today. We're gonna tell you a little bit about that furry friend coming up in just a moment. And also thanks to American Elm Company. They're the ones that has all this uh, great decor that we have here. So thank you again to American Elm Company. We have a fantastic show lined up here on Happy Hour. I'm excited because I get to sit down with Lieutenant Mike O'Day with the Osage Beach Police Department. And we're gonna be talking about the polar bear plunge. Did you know there's a polar bear plunge happening right here at Lake of the Ozarks? And it's been happening here for a long time. You get a jump in the water, you get to raise some money for a great cause. So we'll talk to Lieutenant Mike O'Day and I might even switch outfits to kind of get in a little bit more of that polar bear plunge type of uh, idea. We actually head out of the studio today and we go on the trail with Bill Mulder to talk about the Shepherd of the Hills book. It was written in Lebanon. That's right here in our backyard. So we're gonna find out about this influential book and all that uh, there is to know about Shepherd of the Hills book. And I'm excited to go on the trail with Bill Mulder today. We also check out a face and body bar, the Sublime Face and Body Bar. And I get to go and get a facial today and get to relax. So I'm excited about that. And of course, our furry friends, we go to uh, Megan about our furry friends. We have a rotund cat named Oliver. So we'll find out about that and a whole lot more right here on Happy Hour with DJ Kyle. While the financial services industry for years has focused on products, pricing, and performance, or things we refer to at SRG as the how, our focus for our clients has always been around their why. And without fail, over all these years, those whys have centered around family, occupation, and recreation. Think legacy issues, retirement, or achieving a work-optional lifestyle, and checking off those important things on that recreational bucket list. Our foundational approach remains a focus on the things that matter most to our clients and the things that together we can control. And where those two things overlap, that's where we live and work every day. That's SRG Financial and the Mile Marker Formula. Want a dock that will withstand the weight from a million boats? Want a dock that's different from the usual dock? Then you want Ozark Barge and Dock in Gravois Mills. Ozark Barge and Dock now celebrating 35 years of building the best dock on Lake of the Ozarks. And we guarantee every dock we build. So when it comes time to build your custom dock, trust the best and go with Ozark Barge and Dock, building the best dock at the lake for the last 35 years. If it's happening at the lake, it's happening on Lake TV. From the Polar Plunge... ...to festivals... ...parades... ...aquapalooza... ...and boat shows... Lake TV has it all, even the granddaddy of them all, the shootout.
If you're looking for places to party, things to do, or even a new home to move into, you've got to love Lake TV. Hey, welcome back to Happy Hour with DJ Kyle. I am your host, sponsored by SRG Financial Advisors, home of the Mile Marker Formula. And you're probably, probably wondering why I am in this costume here. This is my Batman costume, and I thought, you know, I feel like this would be an ideal time to wear this because we are sitting here with Lieutenant Mike O'Day with the Osage Beach Police Department. Mike, thank you so much for uh, joining us today. And I have my onesie on because we're talking about the polar bear plunge that's coming up here pretty soon. And this is, when I think of the polar bear plunge, I think of all these costumes and all the, the things that people wear. So you've been involved with the polar bear plunge. Why don't you tell us a little bit about the background of the polar bear plunge? So with the Polar Bear Plunge, it's uh, an event, annual event. We've been doing it for over 20 years now. It's held at uh, PB2 down the beach by the uh, Grand Glaze Bridge. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and you can go online and register at Special Olympics uh, Polar Plunge website, and you'll come down and jump in the lake on February 25th. All right, so now this is, this is all a fundraiser for Special Olympics, and this has been going on at Lake of the Ozarks for over 20 years. I was involved in it several years ago with some of my friends, and it was a, it was a cold day. They actually, I believe the time that we went, they had to go and break the ice so that we could do the plunge. So are we expecting a little bit warmer weather this year, or do we know so we quite? Don't, we're not sure, and what's weird about that is we even have a weather guy that's embedded with the 24-hour plunge and he can't even tell us what we're expecting this year. Oh, I see. So it might be a surprise for all of us. Yes. <laughs> so you've done this plunge. How many years have you been doing the uh, plunge? This will be my 15th year doing the plunge. It'll be my 14th year doing the super plunge. Okay, so tell us what the super plunge. Super plunge is 24 jumps into the lake of the Ozarks in 24 hours. <sighs> that kind of took my breath away a little bit because I did one in in one lifetime, and that was uh, cold. But now they do say there's benefits of this shock to your system and the cold water and stuff. Is that right? Well, is that I'm not rider? sure about any benefits. <laughs> but. <laughs> but it sure does take your breath away, right? Yes, <clears throat> and I can tell you on those early mornings at that 6, 7 a.m. plunge, uh, if you're not awake when you hit the water, you'll be awake. Yeah, so how does, how does the 24 plunge in 24 hours work? Like, do you just wake up as you run down, jump in, come back out, run down, jump in, or do you wait between times? There's, or? there's a timeline or schedule per se. So we'll start plunging on Friday the 24th, around two o'clock usually. And yeah. Then we'll do one or two an hour, get a little bit of sleep overnight, and then get back up early in the morning. <laughs> and we do our last plunge with at 2.30 when the regular plunge kicks off. Really? Now, how, how many people are expecting to do the super plunge, the 24 in 24? Uh, we have 24 registered so far for this year. So this is gonna be 24 people jumping into the lake 24 times in 24 hours. So this is kind of a, a big deal. Yes, it's 24, becoming, 24, 24. It's growing. Um, I remember when it first started I think there was eight the first year I did it or something like that. Yeah. Um, so it's growing over time and a lot of money is being raised through it. Absolutely. Now, how, how would people get involved? How do they donate? How do they get involved for the uh, Polar Bear Plunge? So there's several, if you want to donate to a Super Plunger, there's several of us. You can go on uh, Super Plunge, I believe it's Lake Ozark or Special Olympics and find our pages. Mm -hmm. Or you can go on to their page and register. Um, you can't register for the Super Plunge because you got to go through somebody from Special Olympics. Gotcha, to gotcha. Get that. Um, but as long as you go to any of those plunge pages, um, it will walk you through how to register, um, get signed up, and they'll tell you about all the events going on that day. So I kind of look like I'm a Super Plunger, maybe. Now, you, you would probably suggest not wearing a onesie, or what, what's, your, what's your costume of so, choice to plunge? So for me, I don't wear costumes because the water's average 30 some degrees. Um, That's so cold. when you put all those clothes on like that, it just weighs you down and it takes you longer to get to where you're trying to change into warm clothes. I see, I see. So, so, so take us through a process of you doing a plunge. So you hop down there, I'm sure, do you have like a, 
a robe or a hoodie or something that you, or do you just jump, jump out of your car and go, I'm going to be cold anyhow, <laughs> no. might as well start now. So <laughs> typically what we do, there's some signs there. We'll have our towels and stuff hanging on them and we're in hoodies. Um, I've developed the name O'Day Late because typically I'm the last one out of the building. <laughs> I wait till the diver's in place <laughs> and I wait for everything. That's called smart is what that is, right? So you're, you're inside looking out the window being like, all right, I'm nice and warm, everyone's there and we are ready and yep. go. Because I know if the divers ain't in the water, I can't get in the water. Yep. So there's yep, no reason right. to be standing out there. So, so but we'll run in, uh, some guys go all the way, you know, head in. I don't put my head under because the water's cold. Um, mm -hmm. It does weird things. Uh -huh. So then I get out, and there's places, um, there's a building that down there, we'll go in there, and there's different areas for the guys and then females, and mm -hmm. you change back into warm clothes. Nice. And then the next hour comes along, and there, there's a guy that does our schedule. Yeah. So I just show up, and they're like, we're going to do two this hour, whatever. You, you just do what you're told. Yep. Say, all right, well, I'll jump in the water then. <laughs> so I assume if you're doing 24 jumps, you're, you're not using the same outfit every time right because no. it's cold and wet so, so you have to just bring <clears throat> multiple changes well you bring two or three and then there's dryers on site so oh, okay and we we have like a whole team that takes care of us um, nice whether it's cooking for us running dryers um, and that's one thing you know we're really appreciative is those people that come down um, and help with that event because without them the back end i mean we would just throw clothes in there and we'd be wearing wet clothes uh -huh. yeah right <laughs> so they take on those care wet of shorts are pretty bad <laughs> and they throw them in the dryer as they get done so we just keep rotating sets of clothes now out of the 24 super plunger super plungers this year do you know all of them i know a majority of them there's a couple new ones okay i haven't met them yet i've just seen them through the emails so now now do you guys have some good rivalry as far as i'm gonna raise more than you are well i've got so and so that's well, I mean, pledged so and so for me there's some that goes on we have uh, zach paul with krcg and jt mm -hmm. um, from over at um, I'm not even gonna try. 95 <laughs> over in Versailles. Yeah. Those two, they raise a lot of money. Oh, that's um, great. And then there's the local ones, you know, Chris Wagner and our chief, mm -hmm. he, he does it. So there's a little bit of banting back and forth. Oh, I bet so. That's gotta be pretty fun. Uh, last year it was over 90 grand that just our super plungers were raised. So, $90,000 yes. for Special Olympics. That, that is amazing. And that was just amazing. super plunger, so. That is great. <clears throat> this year, currently, we're sitting at, I thought I wrote it down here somewhere. I thought it was around 58000 so far this year. Wow. Raised, so. That is amazing. So, again, how can people give to this event in, in any way that they can? Um, again, go register. Um, if you don't want to jump in, you don't have to do that either. You can come out the day of the event, which is the 25th of February. Uh, yeah. There'll be several events going on. There'll be a silent auction, chili cook-off, uh, see people that want to <laughs> wear a costume. And yeah. They'll go through a parade at 1.50, 2 o'clock, somewhere in there. So it's not too late to get in, to get involved to do the jumping, right? No. To just do a uh, plunge? You can do any of it, uh, whether you want to be a heat sponsor, get in the chili cook-off, um, do the plunge. Wow, all uh, sorts of things. <clears throat> and then we also have Cops on Top. It'll be coming up February 17th. Nice. Uh, in Osage Beach at Hy-Vee Gas. It'll be from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Uh, there'll be cops from Osage Beach PD. And I'm sure there'll be some other agencies there yeah. helping. Uh, we'll be on top of the building freezing for a reason. And you can come by, <laughs> drop money in the bucket. And Which that'll be quite warmer than the polar bear plunge, it right? It typically so, is. <laughs> so the freezing is like, actually, from the polar bear plunge, this is kind of warm so, right yeah. now. Like, cold air, but There's it's been not cold water. There's been days I've been up there and it's been in the 60s. So yeah. <laughs> it's a lot warmer than the water. Yeah, oh, I bet so. I bet so. So the polar bear plunge is coming up. Osage Beach, The uh, um, it's the public beach too and it's coming up so you can get more information online. Donate, be a part of it. Get some friends together and uh, go out and, and get some costumes, possibly shorts and t-shirts. Yeah. That You might wanna do that, but I would suggest having a robe while you're standing in line waiting to plunge, <laughs> so that way you can kind of stay warm, then you can toss the robe off, run down, do the plunge. Well, uh, Lieutenant Mike O'Day, thank you so much for uh, coming out today. Ain't and no uh, problem. Tell us about all the uh, great events that we have coming up. And we have more with Happy Hour with DJ Kyle coming up.
While the financial services industry for years has focused on products, pricing, and performance, or things we refer to at SRG as the how, our focus for our clients has always been around their why. And without fail, over all these years, those whys have centered around family, occupation, and recreation. Think legacy issues, retirement, or achieving a work-optional lifestyle, and checking off those important things on that recreational bucket list. Our foundational approach remains a focus on the things that matter most to our clients and the things that together we can control. And where those two things overlap, that's where we live and work every day. That's SRG Financial and the Mile Marker Formula. Your furry friends are more than pets, they're family. And at Our Veterinary, we understand that. With multiple locations, we can service your pets when and where you need it. Our team of professionals offer routine wellness, orthopedic care from broken bones to joint repair, and even emergency services. We are ready to welcome your pet to our family with medical or preventative care. Our Veterinary, with six convenient locations, the team providing exceptional care for your pet when and where you need it. Hey, don't miss another great show this week. I got my buddy Jason Vansel filling in. And we got a whole bunch for you about the Versailles Tigers. Versailles Tigers, we'll talk about those Chiefs, Super Bowl champions, and a very special Central Ozarks Medical Center's hometown hero on this week's Cup of Coffee from Slumberland at the Lake. Hey everyone, Daryl Cunningham with Slumberland Furniture at the Lake. We still have our President's Day sale going on. We have furniture for every room in the house on sale. I want you to know that we also have furniture for every budget. We have sofas starting at $4.99, accent chairs at $2.99, and recliners at $3.99. Come see us at Slumberland Furniture, where we're bringing happy home. Welcome back to another edition of Happy Hour. And today we are on the trail with Bill Mulder. So excited to be back on the trail with Bill Mulder. And Bill has brought us to a random house in Lebanon. Bill, what are we doing at this random house here in Lebanon? Well, we are on the trail of history here in Missouri. I think this is one of the biggest shows I've ever done because we are talking about a place where history was made that affected the entire world. Wow. So I know we're kind of going, what the heck? Well, folks, this is where The Shepherd of the Hills was actually written by Harold Bill Wright. This is the house. Wow. So this is, there's a lot of history right here in Lebanon. I never, I think I've driven up and down this road a handful of times and never you, knew I drove by You would never know, here. right. Harold Bill Wright uh, grew up very poor. His dad was a, a drop-dead alcoholic. Uh, his mom did it the best she could. She instilled the love of writing, the love of painting, a lot of different things. She took care of him. His mother passed away when he was in his teens. So he was like bouncing from house to house literally sleeping in haystacks and in barns. And he, he drew something from that and he went to college. He took his first job. He was not intended to be a minister, but he became a minister. Really? And he took his first job over in Pierce City, Missouri. And he had this idea that was stemming from those things that he found as a child. And he wrote the first book, The Printer of Udells. Now folks, you need to buy these books. Take notes, you need these books. The Printer of Udell really is talking about his journey as a kid. And Harold had a different look on religion. Mm -hmm. he, was, he was not that fire and brimstone guy, he liked to teach by example. So he set this book, The Printer of Udell, is pretty much set over in Pierce City and then later over in Pittsburgh, Kansas, which is a short distance away. Well now Harold had some health problems as well. His doctor said, listen, why don't you go down to southern Missouri in the Branson area. That's good climate, you'll feel better, and he took him up on it. 
And while he was down there, he had these other ideas about the way life should be. And he started writing these ideas about the sermon he wanted to give about forgiveness. And that's what the Shepherd of the Hills is truly about, is forgiveness. He started taking notes, and he was picking up on these people down there, uh, old Matt, as he called him, the shepherd himself, and Mad Tom. There's all kinds of Mad Matt, all kinds of different things. And he was writing these ideas down to have this sermon to tell people, think about what you're doing, think about how this affects your life and other people's life. So he had this all together, these ideas, and he gets here as the minister in, of the Methodist Church in 1905. He's here from 1905 to 1907, and he wrote the book here. Wow. He finished it up. Now, as an added bonus, if somebody wants to go down to Branson and go to the Toy Museum, they have a Harold Bell Wright Museum. And you know what they got there? The original handwritten manuscript. Really? Yes. And that all happened right here. That all happened right here, right up here in those two windows. It's a little square office and he could look up and down the street. He was a lover of nature as well. One story attributed to him is a, he would love to go out to uh, what has now been a spring state park to fish. Mm -hmm. At that time, it was not a state park. It was just a good spring and there was some trout out there. And on the way back, he had picked up a leaf and he was telling the guy he was with, he said, don't talk to me. And he just sat and looked at that leaf all the way back. And then he wrote some stuff about nature. He was very much into nature. Now, one other thing that happened while he was here is when he would write those chapters, mm -hmm. he needed a critic to kind of give an idea of, well, by golly, am I doing the right thing, am I not? <laughs> so he would come out, walk down the sidewalk to the house that's right over here behind you and talk to those people and have them, he would read the sermon to them, that chapter, mm -hmm. and they would critique it. Now, there's been said, and I don't have any firm foundation on this, that the kids that lived there, the younger children, were not really thrilled with his ideas. <laughs> kind of uh, critics, yeah. huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, okay, that's pretty cool. Sure, let's go with that. But, uh, you know, thank goodness he, he didn't listen to him completely. Yeah. The church he ministered is just about a block over. Unfortunately, it's gone. We can't go there. I would love if it was still there. Mm -hmm. But what a, what a man to... Uh, to ascribe to think like. And he didn't just stop with the Shepherd of the Hills. He kept those ideas going. Now, the, the books that, that I ascribe to him being part of his ministry, start with the Printer of the Udells, we go to Shepherd of the Hills, then we go to one that was rather controversial here in Lebanon, that's the calling of Dan Matthews. And okay. Dan Matthews was a character that come out of Shepherd of the Hills. He was a son of, of of the uh, some of the principal characters well he comes here as a minister and he starts seeing things that aren't really suitable to him and he he notices a lot of folks that uh, don't treat other people with with less as well as as he likes to they want to treat so he starts writing a sermon about this he's and it's nothing to really is not about lebanon but folks got mad at him they just so, assume that they assume well you know it's said in the the town of corinth and he describes the railroad tracks, New Town, Old Town. He describes the courthouse and the statue. Uh, he describes a doctor. Well, he's just using these things to make a story. Mm -hmm. When you read through it and you completely adopt what he's saying, it's like, treat everybody the same. Treat everybody well. Reach out a helping hand because one of the people in the story is Jewish and he has a crippled leg so he doesn't move around very well and they that family doesn't get treated nice yeah so all he was he was given a message but people took it very seriously even today i think there's some people that uh, still have a little bit of generational disregard for harold bell right yeah then he wrote another book he took dan matthews dan matthews got tired said i don't like this way of thinking this kind of organized religion is not what we need to be doing. We need to be thinking out of the box. We need to be thinking like Jesus taught us. Mm -hmm. And so he takes Dan, Dan Matthews quits as a minister here. He said, can't do it anymore. It's not the right thing. And he starts on his final journey. He goes to Kansas City. Now in the Shepherd of the Hills, there was a mention of a cave. Well, it turns out that cave had a lot of minerals in it mm -hmm. and they're very rich by the time he gets to Kansas City. In Kansas City, he's 
a grocer. He's selling, I'm sorry, he's a businessman. Mm -hmm. And he says, I want to do an experiment. I want people to buy religion like they buy groceries. I okay. want them to go in and be able to find things on the shelf and get it and use it properly. So that was the final one, God and the Grocery Man. So if you read those, you really get the spirit of, of what that man was like. Mm -hmm. Now he did read, uh, write a lot of other books. He kind of got out of the, uh, the business of writing about religion. Another thing I found extremely interesting was his, uh, his peers of the time. Now some folks will recognize, some of the names uh, you may not be familiar with, but Owen Wister, who wrote The Virginian, very popular Western book. Owen Wister really tore Harold up. Oh. He said that Harold Bell Wright was a hack and the book was horrible. Now that was released in 1907. It became a hit almost immediately, The Shepherd of the Hills. Mm -hmm. I mean, it went crazy. In fact, in the mid early part of the 20th century, it was the only second selling to the Bible. Wow. That's how much that thing took off. So I think Owen Wister maybe had a little jealousy going on uh. along with some of these other writers that were known. And I think they were saying, well, wait a minute, who's this guy and why does everybody like this book so much? Uh -huh. But it's one of the most gentle books. It really does capture, it, when you read it, it captures the Shepherd of the Hills country, the Branson country. It captures the spirit. And that was what he was bringing across and all these people and how gentle they were. Yeah. And this is a way he wanted people to live. He was a very gentle man. Now, some things that people don't know about Harold Bell Wright, but he was an environmentalist as well. And if you go out to Tucson, Arizona, you will find streets called Shepherd of the Hills and oh. some other things from his book. He came up with the idea that there's too much conglomeration. The city of Tucson is too tight. So he moved to the outside of it and said, we need to, to expand, we need to have bigger lots, we need not to be forcing ourselves together so much. And by golly, it took off. And it, it was just one of those things. Why are we living together in such tight space and destroying the environment? Mm -hmm. So he was really ahead of his time. He understood wow. these concepts and he knew how to bring the, that across. And he did write some stuff that, that got into that. So as far as a character from, from uh, born in Rome, New York, and come here to get better health and be a minister, he really left a mark. Oh, absolutely. Uh, one of those people that uh, we don't real recognize him as much. There are still Harold Bill Wright societies out there and people that, that really look into it. But I'm telling you folks, if you've not read these books, buy them and read them. You will be amazed at the depth this man had. And just to know that that all happened right here in our front yard. I mean, yeah. it's, it's right here in Lebanon. I, I never would have known that. Well, you know, he, he got the idea. He was sort of actually living behind uh, some people's house down there in Branson area that was, uh, well, now it's out on 76 Country Boulevard. If you drive out 76, <laughs> it's almost built up out there to it. Back in the day, this was way out in the country. Uh -huh. And he talks about those people and how kind they were. And he would travel around the area and talk to the kids and talk to people and pick up on these ideas. And all the people that he based his characters off of lived there. Now the same way here when he wrote Calling a Dan Matthews. Again, it's not meant to say, well, Lebanon's a bad town or Corinth. It's just an example. Uh, it's like saying that, you know, uh, movies we see today that by golly, if you base it, it's based off of that and it's true <laughs> and it hurts us like, Netflix Ozark. Yeah. You know, yeah. that's just a story. It has mm -hmm. nothing to do with the o Lake of the Ozarks. Same way with Harold. He was just telling this story. Yeah. And it's it's something that's so worthwhile and I would hope someday down the road this these books become kind of come back into being again where people can read it and go, what a neat thing to think and what a cool way to think about things. Yeah. Because it truly is. You know, if we sometimes we get in this workaday world and we forget who we are, mm -hmm. and I I love reading it. I will pick them up and read them again some so time and go, man, that, this guy had it figured out. Yeah, just be kind to one another, That's, right? That is <laughs> all he was talking about. Treat everybody with respect. Mm -hmm. If you see somebody needs help, do it. It was the golden rule. Yeah, and that's absolutely. all he was teaching. 
absolutely. So history made right here in Lebanon, right behind us. This is right up there in those windows. Just absolutely amazing. You're just full of all of the knowledge. I, I absolutely love On the Trail, and I cannot wait for more episodes of On the Trail with you. Well, I'll agree with you. I'm full of something. <laughs> we'll go with knowledge. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we're going to have some more fun. And uh, as we talked uh, the other day, I'm going to be going out west here in just about a month, and we're going to bring some things into focus. Like, did you have you ever heard of the shootout at the OK Corral? Yes, I have. I'm going to be back there. We're going to be talking how that ties in to Missouri. Huh. OK Corral, the shootout at OK Corral, the one that I'm, that I'm familiar with, ties back to Missouri. Everybody that was a participant there has a big link to Missouri. Very interesting. That's something I didn't know. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us on another edition of On the Trail with Bill Mulder. Bill, thank you again for uh, all of the knowledge you brought to us today. Well, Kyle, it's always a pleasure. I look forward to some more things, and who knows what we might do. That's right. While the financial services industry for years has focused on products, pricing, and performance, or things we refer to at SRG as the how, our focus for our clients has always been around their why. And without fail, over all these years, those whys have centered around family, occupation, and recreation. Think legacy issues, retirement, or achieving a work-optional lifestyle and checking off those important things on that recreational bucket list. Our foundational approach remains a focus on the things that matter most to our clients and the things that together we can control. And where those two things overlap, that's where we live and work every day. That's SRG Financial and the Mile Marker Formula. Want a dock that will withstand the wake from a million boats? Want a dock that's different from the usual dock? Then you want Ozark Barge and Dock in Gravois Mills. Ozark Barge and Dock now celebrating 35 years of building the best dock on Lake of the Ozarks. And we guarantee every dock we build. So when it comes time to build your custom dock, trust the best and go with Ozark Barge and Dock, building the best dock at the lake for the last 35 years. Hey, welcome back to Lake TV and Happy Hour with me, your host, DJ Kyle. I'm very excited because today we are sitting right here in this fantastic chair, right inside of Sublime Face and Body Bar. And I found out today I get a facial. So I'm very excited about this. So we have Angela. Angela, thank you so much for today. This is gonna be fantastic. Yeah. I'm excited about getting pampered and relaxing today. Well, unfortunately, so. I don't think I have you down for a facial. I think what we're gonna do to you today is wax your nose hairs. Now that does not sound as exciting and relaxing as a facial, but- Well, I thought torturing you, you would be much more fun for yeah, our, your well, audience here. I've never had that happen. I've always seen videos <laughs> of that, and I'm already kind of tearing up right now, but I say anything once. Let's go ahead and give it a I shot. I can hear the tremble in your voice. What oh, you I am nervous about this. Well, we're My gonna pump you is... up. Yes. Now, is this just where they put like the Q-tip up and then they just like rip everything oh, out yeah. all at you once? Oh yeah, you look like a little walrus. Oh my, oh my, this is gonna be pretty bad. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna lean you back oh. a little bit. Okay, so tell us about some of the things that you offer here. Maybe the more enjoyable things <laughs> and not looking like a walrus. Um, so we do full hour facials, and then this is our facial bar here. We do half hour facials here. We have two memberships. Um, we have a $60 a month membership. That's our facial bar membership. You get a dermaplane, you get a chemical peel, you get a mask all in a half hour for once a month. And then we also have treatment rooms in the back where you get a full hour relaxing facial. Um, we also do full body waxing, sugaring, and of course, nose waxing. Oh yeah, sugaring. <laughs> Tell me about sugaring. So sugaring is what we use on the full body. Um, so basically it's a natural form of waxing. It's less painful, it lasts a little bit longer. Um, so we use it on the arms, the underarms, the bikini line, things like that. Oh, 
interesting. All right, let's get on with this waxing so that uh, this nightmare can continue. Are you getting a, a good angle here? Uh, Megan, is this let's good? See, let's see how much. Uh... Oh my, oh, this is gonna be bad. Oh. Oh, it's warm. Uh, uh, uh. Oh no. So we're just gonna have to wait till it dries, so the anticipation. Okay, so do you just do one at a time? I'm gonna do one at a time oh. for you, make it a little easier on you. So with most people, would you just rip two out? You can, do you want oh. me to rip oh, two Oh, I don't time? know about that. <laughs> but maybe that's the best, oh, I don't know. Oh, don't stick to them. I'm trying to tell all the hairs not to stick. Oh, they're sticking. Oh. I, see, I'm already crying. Look, there's already tears. You'll be all right. Oh, this Do is... Do I need to have someone come over and hold your hand? <laughs> I'm really nervous about this. <laughs> is this worse than childbirth? Um, no! Are you kidding me? <laughs> I don't know why you paused so long. Because <laughs> I didn't know whether to smack you or put the other stick in the nose. <laughs> oh, worse than childbirth. <laughs> Oh, this is gonna be really bad. I can't focus on anything else. Usa, how long does this take? Not long at all. Oh, I'm getting really nervous. Ready. You're gonna tell me before you rip it out, right? We're gonna count to three, and on okay, three, good. I'm gonna rip it out. Because I'm not sure if my heart can take it if you just ripped it out. Okay, you ready? Oh my. One, two. Oh, is that it? Oh, that really wasn't bad at all. Look at all your nose hairs. Holy moly, look at that. Oh, do not get a close up of that. <laughs> Nobody needs to see. Boy, I. Let's I, do the other side. It's like you cleared a nostril out. It's not bad. You really is did. It? That's not bad at all. So, so what is. How much would something like that cost? So if, I, if I just came I in and our, said, I have a forest up in here and I need to not have a forest up in there? I think we charge $8 for a nose wax. I tell you what. Four dollars per nostril. I got more worked up than I thought. I think you could have done both at the same time and I wouldn't have. I think you would have been good. Oh, see, look at that. <laughs> I might have to come back here for another one. You're I, gonna now, get addicted to it. Now, when, when you wax them, it takes them a lot longer to grow back, correct? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Ooh, good. You ready for Boy, the other one? I'm ready. You're Bring not it even on. nervous no, anymore. No, not at all. Did that go up in my brain? Is yeah, it gonna a little bit. My brain out? Yeah, a little bit. So I don't have very much in there. You don't have very many brains. <laughs> I, don't, I don't have very much <laughs> brain cells in there. Oh my! Oh, see now my eyes are watering. But now I don't you know. know it's I know. Not so I know bad. it doesn't hurt, but I'm still the anticipation. Oh. So my. maybe we should have done two at the same time. Yeah, maybe. So now you also offer massages. What what are some of the other uh, things that uh, people could call up and do you have gift cards? Like tell us yeah. a little bit more about the business. So I also have um, Shara here. She's been a massage therapist for over 15 years in the Lake area. She specializes in energy work. Um, she is a phenomenal massage therapist, but she's also licensed as a manicurist and as an esthetician. Um, so what's great about her is you could spend the whole day with her, get your nails done, get a facial, get some waxing done, and get a massage. Um, but yeah, we all also offer gift cards. Um, we actually had a group of 10 ladies in here a couple weekends ago. We did like a fun charcuterie board and some wine oh, and nice. they spent the whole day with us. So um, that was a blast. Um, but yeah, we're just kind of laid back and relaxed. We're getting booked up quick. We opened in December. See, I'm You're tear yeah, I'm te See, I, I tear up with the nose, nose and eyes. Oh. Ooh. Oh, see, you didn't even count. Look at nope. that. I've got a couple tears. A I'm couple tears. I'm just going to be honest. There's a couple tears. But that. That really wasn't as bad as Not I thought that bad, it was. Not bad, huh? 
I feel like the facial would have maybe been a little bit more relaxing. Probably. But, but yeah. <laughs> Another Probably. thing with our facial, I actually custom made a product line here and it's called Sublime Skin Care. Really? Um, so it's a product out of Canada. They actually have way higher standards um, for skincare than the US does. Unfortunately, the US doesn't put any regulations on any kind of beauty products that are on the market. Um, so it's a great line. Went through a lot of research to make the line, so we have that as well. Well, as I'm crying, let's get to Shara over here to tell us a little bit about uh, the uh, massage that we have going on. Tell us about uh, some of the uh, things that you offer here at Sublime. So like Angela said, uh, I'm dual licensed, so I offer a little bit of everything. Uh, I'm an esthetician and a manicurist. Uh, my passion is in touch, so uh, massage is definitely my love. Uh, I do do Reiki here, um, that's kind of new to people, which is energy work. We work with the energy of the chakra system and um, some trapped emotions and, and things like that. that that's, that's what I love to do. Um, my massages, they aren't broken into groups like Swedish deep tissue. Um, it's just one massage and we go over your needs, you know, whether it be physical or emotional, and we just kind of go from there on each individual person. That's awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for yeah. uh, having us here. Now, how can they uh, find us? Um, so we're right next to Trace Ombres in Greenview. Um, and you can give us a call or you can book online. Our website is www.sublimefaceofbodybar.com and our phone number is, I do not have it memorized yet. Chantaine? <laughs> 573-836-5500. <laughs> there you go. Well, yeah, thank you. we've only been open for who memorizes hey, phone numbers exactly, anymore, right? Well, I'm so thankful that uh, we get to come out to Sublime. So call up, book an appointment, come in, get some massage, get your nose done. Like I could breathe better now. So thank you, ladies, so much here at Sublime, and we have more with Happy Hour right here on Lake TV. While the financial services industry for years has focused on products, pricing, and performance, or things we refer to at SRG as the how, our focus for our clients has always been around their why. And without fail, over all these years, those whys have centered around family, occupation, and recreation. Think legacy issues, retirement, or achieving a work-optional lifestyle, and checking off those important things on that recreational bucket list. Our foundational approach remains a focus on the things that matter most to our clients and the things that together we can control. And where those two things overlap, that's where we live and work every day. That's SRG Financial and the Mile Marker Formula. Want a dock that will withstand the wake from a million boats? Want a dock that's different from the usual dock? Then you want Ozark Barge and Dock in Gravois Mills. Ozark Barge and Dock now celebrating 35 years of building the best dock on Lake of the Ozarks. And we guarantee every dock we build. So when it comes time to build your custom dock, trust the best and go with Ozark Barge and Dock, building the best dock at the lake for the last 35 years. Your furry friends are more than pets, they're family. And at our veterinary, we understand that. With multiple locations, we can service your pets when and where you need it. Our team of professionals offer routine wellness, orthopedic care from broken bones to joint repair, and even emergency services. We are ready to welcome your pet to our family with medical or preventative care. Our veterinary, with six convenient locations, the team providing exceptional care for your pet when and where you need it. Welcome to another Furry Friends here on Lake TV, presented by our veterinary. I'm Megan Albers, this is Mary Meow Me Tilly, and our, our very cuddly, sweet friend here is Oliver. What can, you tell, what can you tell me about him? What can we tell you about Oliver? Well, Oliver, first and foremost, is a single dad. Oh, single dad. He came in with his two sons. 
there was a um, an unfortunate divorce situation. Mm. It happens. And, uh, Even in the, the animal fam- kingdom. The family was able, some of the family was able to take the mama kitty, but we had Oliver and his... Uh, his older son, who is about nine months old, and his, the younger son, who is about four months old, mm-hmm. uh, from two different litters, same mama, two different litters, came in with him. Oliver himself is just a little over a year old. Oh, really? Uh, so, you know, he, he got started early. Yeah. <laughs> Young See, single I, dad. I totally thought he was older. He, d- he seems wise. He f- seems very seasoned and wise and mature well, for his he, age. He's, he's been through a lot. I mean, parenthood <laughs> you know? will do that to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. His younger son, uh, Duder, got adopted over the weekend. Okay. Um, so we have Oliver and the older boy, Tudor. Tudor. Who is a black and white tuxedo. <laughs> Um, Oliver is very snuggly. He um, is. When he first got fixed and, and then moved down to the kitten room here, um, we always like to move them into the kitten room first before we take them back to the adult cat yeah. room uh, for multiple reasons. Uh, one, because a lot of times they're moving down before they're completely healed mm-hmm. from their spay or neuter surgery, so that gives them that little extra time to heal up before they're around the other cats. And then also, uh, sometimes we don't know how they're going to do around other cats. Uh, so, you know, it gives them a chance to come down here, decompress, and, yeah. and get used to being around people and everything mm-hmm. and the level of activity here. And then um, also in this room, you know, this is the room that people come into off of the lobby. Mm-hmm. And so we have a lot of people that just come in and look. And so they get a lot more attention in here than yeah. they do in the adult cat room. We have to take them back there. And, yep. and you know, not everybody wanders back that way. So, so he's in here hanging out for a while. First couple of days, he was a little nervous. He was hiding in the litter box and... And I spent one whole Saturday, like if I wasn't on the phone or talking to somebody, I was I was in here trying to coax him out of the box. And yeah. now that he's found his way out, he's oh, yeah. just a little lover boy. He's loving it. And I, mm-hmm. I put my hand in here initially <laughs> just to kind of see if he would, you know, come up to me and like sniff me and everything. <laughs> And his instinct was to just flop over, like, oh, love me. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> yep, he loves belly rubs once he gets used to you. Yeah, and he's very purry. Very, oh, yeah. Very purry. He's purring like crazy over mm-hmm. here. You probably can't hear it, but he's. We'll he's have the, the biscuit action going yep. here in a minute, probably. <laughs> he's, he's working on it. <laughs> yeah, those, those chubby little cheeks. Yeah. I, mean, I don't know how anybody could resist this face. I, know, I would take him home sweet. in a heartbeat. Yeah. <laughs> Goodness, look at that. Uh, so you yeah. have a couple of fundraising events coming up, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, so on Tuesday the 21st, uh, we will have our next uh, Show Me Your Money event at okay. uh, Westside Pub in Sunrise Beach. That'll be from 6 to 8 p.m. And you go in and there is a, uh, they're going to have their, their food and drinks and a lot of fun and games and a chance to win cash prizes. Oh, awesome. And we have had some generous people so far during these events who have donated all or part of their um, prizes back to the shelter, oh, which so is great. great. Yeah, but It's basically a, a 50-50 split. Um, whatever the pot is, 50% comes to us, mm-hmm. and then 50% goes to the winner. And then... Um, um, on the 18th is the deadline to sign up for our Paint Your Pet Oh, okay, event. yeah. Uh, the event itself it will be held on Sunday the 26th, okay. uh, but you need to get signed up by that Saturday beforehand uh, to get make sure you, that there's space and to get your photo of your pet in uh, so that she can get everything prepped for the, the painting. Yeah. And um, she basically does like a paint by numbers kind of situation. That, yeah, pretty she, like, much. That's she what sketches it, it out like. yeah, for you. She's going so to sketch it out. Hard part. So, so that you know you've got a got a good basis to go on. And hopefully, have some some awesome results yeah. coming out of that. That's awesome. So you know, even if you're not 
very artistically inclined, you're still going to come out of there with a, a good yes. end result. <laughs> Something that'll pass is looking like your pet. <laughs> right. Um, so those are two great fundraising opportunities. If a business wants to help fundraise, how would they go about that? Uh, they can just call up here to the shelter and depend and talk to me or Angie. And depending on what type of event they're looking at, what they're wanting to do, um, we may put them in touch with one of the board members because mm-hmm. uh, they are the ones who usually are spearheading like the live events, like the yeah, game nights yeah. and things like that. If it's something more online um, or if we're doing like an an actual animal event where we mm-hmm. would be, you know, maybe having an adoption day or something, uh, then that would probably be me or Angie that would, would be discussing more of that with them. Okay. But, yeah, all, right. all they need to do is just call up here or shoot me an email, and then we'll get started discussing their ideas and see what we can do. Perfect. We're, we're open to pretty much anything. Oh, yeah, <laughs> for sure. Anything that will bring in some money. Um, and, of course, if you want to just give out of your own pocket, you can go to the website. Um, I'm sure you can drop off a check or, mm-hmm. you know, a yep. wad of cash if you <laughs> so choose. Um, we, we will not turn it away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, and uh, let's see if we can get this sweet boy adopted. You can uh, fill out that application form online as well. Um, there is a pre-approval process, but um, I don't know if he's going to be here for very long because he is just so cuddly. Look at this. He's loving it. He loves all of the attention. It's not a trap. No, it's not. <laughs> see, usually you rub a cat's stomach and there's usually some murder paws that come mm-hmm. at you or some teeth. But He says, oh, let's show my backside. He just loves all the attention. He says, this ends handsome too. The best day of his life. <laughs> yeah, he's handsome all the way around. <laughs> so again, go to OzarksCatAndCanine.com uh, to fill out an application to find out some more info on the shelter or to give... Uh, That does it for another Furry Friends here on Lake TV, presented by Our Veterinary. While the financial services industry for years has focused on products, pricing, and performance, or things we refer to at SRG as the how, our focus for our clients has always been around their why. And without fail, over all these years, those whys have centered around family, occupation, and recreation. Think legacy issues, retirement, or achieving a work-optional lifestyle, and checking off those important things on that recreational bucket list. Our foundational approach remains a focus on the things that matter most to our clients and the things that together we can control. And where those two things overlap, that's where we live and work every day. That's SRG Financial and the Mile Marker Formula. Your furry friends are more than pets, they're family. And at Our Veterinary, we understand that. With multiple locations, we can service your pets when and where you need it. Our team of professionals offer routine wellness, orthopedic care from broken bones to joint repair, and even emergency services. We are ready to welcome your pet to our family with medical or preventative care. Our Veterinary, with six convenient locations, the team providing exceptional care for your pet when and where you need it. If you like local high school sports, Lake TV is the place to be. We bring you live high school football games in the fall, along with the high school football coaches show. In the winter, Lake TV brings you live high school basketball and the high school basketball coaches show. Tune into Lake TV for local high school sports, featuring the Indians, Mustangs, Tigers, Lakers, and Pintos. If you like local high school sports, Lake TV is the place to be. Want a dock that will withstand the wake from a million boats? Want a dock that's different from the usual dock? Then you want Ozark Barge and Dock in Gravois Mills. Ozark Barge and Dock now celebrating 35 years of building the best dock on Lake of the Ozarks. And we guarantee every dock we build. So when it comes time to build your custom dock, trust the best and go with Ozark Barge and Dock. Building the best dock at the lake for the last 35 years. If it's happening at the lake, it's happening on Lake TV. From the Polar Plunge 
to festivals, parades, Aquapalooza, and boat shows, Lake TV has it all. Even the granddaddy of them all, the shootouts. If you're looking for places to party, things to do, or even a new home to move into, you've got to love Lake TV. What a fantastic show, and I want to thank you so much for joining us on Happy Hour today. Again, I want to say thanks to our sponsors, SRG Financial Advisors. Definitely appreciate your sponsorship. Ozark Barge and Dock, our veterinary at the lake. Thank you so much to uh, all of our sponsors, and thank you to you for watching this show. What a fantastic show. Again, thanks to Mike, uh, Lieutenant Mike O'Day from the Osage Beach to Police Department. Uh, learned a lot about the polar bear plunge, the 24 in 24. That sounds pretty exciting. Um, Bill Mulder, it was so fun to uh, talk uh, on the trail with Bill Mulder about the Shepherd of the Hills book. Hope you learned a, a lot about that. And that uh, sublime, yeah, I thought that I was getting a, uh, a nice, relaxing facial. And But I do have to say... My nose is clear, so uh, thank you uh, to the ladies there at Sublime for uh, my nose wax. That was uh, quite interesting. And our furry friends, thank you so much, Megan, for bringing uh, furry friends. Join us next week right here at Happy Hour with DJ Kyle. We have uh, Neil Gist. We're going to be sitting down and uh, chatting with Neil Gist about the Watchdog Report and all the things that are happening in Camden County. Speaking of Camden County, James Gohagen, our Camden County uh, Commissioner. Uh, we're going to sit down and uh, chat with him uh, next week. Also, Narcan Bending Machines. Do you know anything about Narcan Bending Machines? Well, we're going to learn about that next week on the Happy Hour Show with Constance Hoffman of Central Ozarks Medical Center. I think they're going to be doing some pretty amazing things right here around Lake of the Ozarks. And, of course, next week we bring you another Furry Friends, another chance for you to take home maybe a dog or a cat. Also, if you're looking for some fun, exciting times, I do trivia nights every Thursday night at the Jones Gin Joint in Osage Beach. It's right down Highway KK. Love for you to come on out. It happens Thursday nights at 6.30 is when we get started. But you're probably going to want to get there early so that you can get a table. But uh, show up. We have a fun time. There's uh, fantastic food, fantastic drinks, and lots of great trivia that we do each and every Thursday night. So make sure you join us. Again, that's Jones Gin Joint. And it's every Thursday night for some trivia. Would love to have you come out and say hey to us. Say that you saw this broadcast. There you go. You might even win a prize or something. So make sure you join us uh, next week right here on the Happy Hour Show. Lots of fun. And thank you so much for tuning in to Lake TV. Lake TV.